Okay, so uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, an oscilloscope and um, its uh, use uh, with uh, different, two different kinds of coupling that are uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the oscilloscope available. One is AC coupling and the other is DC coupling and I want to show you two, um, uh, two effects that come as a result of your choice of DC or AC coupling. So what I have here is, a, uh, is the function generator uh, that is set to 100 hertz uh, square wave and it is playing a 100 hertz, uh, displaying a 100 hertz square wave uh, on the uh, oscilloscope. And I also have a power supply that is uh, set for two volts DC. And you can see now that we have two volts of DC uh, being displayed on the oscilloscope as well. The zero line is down here and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the gain is set to two volts per division and it's up one division. You can see it's a flat line uh, as a power supply should be. You know, it should be a constant voltage. So uh, I'm going to talk first about the, um, uh, uh, the, the power supply. So what I want to do uh, first is just to turn off uh, channel one, which is, the, uh, which is the function generator, and take a look at the power supply. So uh, now we look at, hit at this and we say, well, gee, you know, nice flat line. Um, but uh, if we were to um, be, make it much more sensitive, we would see that there is, it's not really a flat line. Uh, there's actually noise on that two volt, uh, what appears to be a two volt constant signal. And the way I could do that would be, I'd like to increase the sensitivity of the uh, oscilloscope in order to be able to amplify the, um, the view on the screen. And so if I do that, if I make it a little more sensitive here, whoops, I better go to the right um, channel here. And you see, you can see I'm making it more sensitive. It's now one volt per uh, division, and here's a half a volt per division, and it's still looking pretty good. But if I get more than a half, a, more sensitive than half a volt per division, um, the uh, the display is off scale. You know, there just isn't enough. And you can see that we are we have what is called <coughs> excuse me DC coupling here. Now, if I were to, um, and this is the channel one menu, so I'm going to hit the channel two menu, and I still have coupling, uh, DC coupling here, as you can see, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for it to be AC. So as soon as we go to AC coupling, the DC level of the um, output of the uh, power supply is uh, blocked. And so we're, you can see that right now uh, it's sitting at zero. But the beauty of this is now that I can increase the sensitivity a lot. And I'm down to 50 millivolts per division now. And you can see that the line is getting a little fatter and fatter yet. And I'm down to uh, 10 millivolts uh, per division. And you can now see that there is some noise on that one, uh, two volt um, uh, level that is coming out of the power supply. So it's not a perfectly flat uh, signal. Uh, and if I were to uh, make it much more, uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so now I'm, I'm running at 100 uh, microseconds per uh, division. You can see that there's actually some structure to this. Um, and if I were to run it out much more quickly, then perhaps hit the stop button. Look at you can see what is actually riding on that two volt DC value, um, but you can only see it if you AC couple the signal coming in so that all of the DC is blocked. Because as you saw, as you increase the sensitivity, the two volts just takes it, you know, would be up at the ceiling someplace like that that's where the level would be. So uh, we can't do that, so we need to AC couple the signal.
okay now, so uh, I want to talk about the function generator output. Uh, so I'm going to turn off the uh, channel 2 signal and we can just look at this square wave. Uh, now this is, uh, if I go to uh, the channel 1 menu here, we can see that we are DC coupled here. Uh, and we get, your, get the nice 100 hertz square wave. Okay, but what happens if I AC couple this, what's, what's going to happen here? Well, when I go to AC, boom, you can see that the waveform is no longer a square wave. In fact, it sort of looks like it might be a capacitor discharge uh, curve. Sort of looks like it might be. You can see there's a slight bowing of the signal uh, when it's doing this. So, uh, you know, and, and in fact, that's exactly uh, what is going on. And so if you see this when you are running your experiments, uh, you instantly know that the uh, oscilloscope is uh, AC coupled instead of DC coupled and all you have to do is ask it to be DC coupled and you get your nice square wave back. Okay, so uh, what I want to talk right about right now is uh, sort of a little bit better explanation of what's actually going on uh, with the uh, with this uh, AC coupling versus DC coupling. Um, let's think about uh, so what I've drawn here is a sort of a block diagram of uh, what we had uh, in the uh, earlier parts of the video, where we have a function generator connected to an oscilloscope. And in the, we are in the AC position, and you can see that when we're in the AC coupling position, we have a capacitor that is in line with the signal coming from the function generator. So more in more of a like of a schematic uh, kind of a thing, uh, I replace the function generator with the uh, with the power supply, the two volt power supply that we had um, uh, in uh, the earlier part of the. Uh, of the video, and in the AC position, it's pretty clear what's what's happening here, right? Um, the uh, we know the capacitors do not like to um, uh, see a change in voltage, and that they block DC. We know that they have that uh, characteristic, and so whatever voltage is on the battery here, or the power supply, the DC power supply, will appear across this capacitor, and by KVL of course, uh, there will be no voltage across the oscilloscope itself. And I'm representing the oscilloscope here with some, with what its internal uh, resistance would be, which is probably on the order of a one mega ohm or maybe higher. So um, there would be no voltage here because this is basically an open circuit. So that's basically what happens when you are in the AC position. If you were to move the switch down to the DC position, then um, uh, uh, what would happen is that the capacitor is bypassed and the two volts would appear directly across the oscilloscope and that's what you saw is that the flat line that was there moved up one uh, division in the grid and we had two volts per division set as the gain on the oscilloscope so that was exactly what we would have expected. So that's how it works for the, the battery or for the power supply. Now, if I replace this with, a, um, with the function generator that's generating a square wave, so I've got a square wave here, and it's both sides of zero. And um, now, now what do we have? Well, it's a little more complex. Um, the um, the uh, capacitor, as you know, does not like to see change in voltage, and so it will allow any amount of current uh, to um, keep uh, to try to keep that voltage at the same place as it was. Um, so uh, if what that means is that how does it do that? Well, it acts like a short circuit or a very you know very low resistance short circuit, and then the current that's in here is limited only by the resistance the voltage level here and the resistance. And so when it's a short and the voltage is changing, it, it, it's, when the voltage is changing, it's a short, and so it's going to follow that, that vertical slope going up. Um, the, uh, the voltage across here will follow that vertical slope going up because there's no voltage across here because it's a short. So what we would have then 
is when the input voltage goes up and flattens out. The output voltage follows it up, but now this is beginning to look like a DC supply like we had before. So what happens? Well, this capacitor starts to charge up a little bit. And when it charges up, we have KVL here, right? And that means when there's charge building up across here, that means there's voltage building up across here. And with, with KVL, that tells us there will be less voltage. It will actually be dropping across the oscilloscope. So you will get this kind of a thing here. This is charging up according to an exponential, uh, the capacitor is. And so this is the, the, then the voltage is being dropped across the oscilloscope by an exponential. And then what happens? Well, the output drops back to a negative value if this is, if this is zero here. This would be zero. Goes back to some negative value. And again, the capacitor acts like a short. And so the voltage across the, in, uh, the oscilloscope follows it right down because it's a short. And so whatever is happening with the voltage over here is, is shown right here. And, but then the same thing happens. The capacitor starts to charge up in the other direction, and we get something that looks like this. And so what we end up with is a waveform that has this characteristic slant to it. And when you see that, that is a dead ringer indication for the fact that the um, oscilloscope is AC coupled and not, and not DC coupled. So you wouldn't get a good square wave until you DC couple the scope. So uh, I hope that uh, helps to explain what's actually going on uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the oscilloscope, uh, and um, thank you for watching.